So this comment is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. So he says, the strongest people are Africans from Cameroon and Nigeria. We don't use steroids and are born with muscles and dominate all the sports that use strength and quick twitch. I can name hella West Africans that have been popped for gear. Let's start off with Johan Blake, Sprinter Jamaica, Asafa Pau, Sprinter Jamaica. Um, you want to go to baseball, Fernando Tatis, uh, infielder, Dominican Republic, W. Ortiz, uh, designated hitter, Dominican Republic, Alex Rodriguez, first uh, third baseman, formerly shortstop, Dominican Republic. He played shortstop with the Mariners and with the Rangers, and then he switched to third base when he played for the Yankees because of Derek Jeter. Uh, Sammy Sosa, outfielder, Dominican Republic. Kevin Lebron, outfielder, Dominican Republic. Uh, Fernando Tatis, infielder, uh, Dominican Republic. All of whom are of West African descent. So that's been debunked. Second, and body weight workouts are better for combat than lifting heavy weights that unevenly distribute weight on your body and make you stiff. Again, I am hyper responsive to absolute and dynamic strength. And it says I'm genetically built for weightlifting and throwing events due to having good genotypes of ACTN3 and ADRB2, good genotypes of MLN, and good genotypes of ZNF608. So that is debunked. And then I want to play this clip for from... Uh, in soccer, we trust Jesse Marsh because um, he he obliterates this dumbass Englishman. Again, brother, just like Boucher 8503, I am no fan of the English either. But again, I'm more scientific than him. I know way more about science than him. He doesn't know jack shit about science. But this brother right here, Jesse Marsh, he knows about science and he's going to debunk this guy from Men in Blazers. Let's check it out. So you don't develop your Iniestas, your Zavis, your David Silvers. Again, the English infatuation with these little playmakers, Iniesta, Xavi, David Silva, I don't get it. I'd rather have the big bruising center back, big bruising defensive midfielder, big bruising uh, center forward from somewhere like, you know, Algeria, Egypt, Iraq, Syria, Palestine, that can come in, destroy some forwards if they're a defender, Destroy some midfielders if they're a CDM. Destroy some for, uh, defenders if they're a forward. You know, that's what makes the beautiful game beautiful. It's not the technical dribbling. It's not the passing. It's the speed and the strength. It's the ability to, abol to obliterate the opposition's forward, to clatter the opposition's forward. It is the ability to destroy the opposition's forward and win the ball. Or if you're a center forward, it's the ability to destroy the opposition's back line, win headers, play back to goal, do some pin and spin. That's what makes soccer the beautiful game. Not some little fruity dribbling, right? Players with touch and vision and... Touch and vision. I don't give a shit about touch or vision. I care about strength, marking, tackling, interceptions, and speed and acceleration. That's all I care about. I opened on the, on the small side. Coaches just put the big kids in, your young Connor Casey's, and let them obliterate opponents. Oh, I love obliterating opponents. I get a rush of dopamine when I destroy forwards, when I destroy wingers, when I destroy attacking midfielders. I get a, I'm like my dad. I get a huge rush of dopamine when I use my speed and my strength to clatter an opponent, obliterate an opponent. I almost get as much of a dopamine rush as when I hit a heavy front squat or hit a heavy snatch or heavy clean and jerk or a heavy push press or even a heavy back squat or do some ply or when I do some plyometrics, right? I get a huge dopamine rush when I clatter a forward or clatter a winger or clatter an attacking midfielder or box to box midfielder. I get a huge dopamine rush. Yes. Yes. Um, and, and listen, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, you know, the United States has a diverse ethnic background, right? And these things aren't so politically easy um, to speak about. Uh, but just now talking from a development perspective, okay? I'm not talking about any kind of political correctness. Perspective. Fuck political correctness. I don't give a shit about political correctness. What I care about is the strength development of athletes from Wales, France, Iraq, Syria, Palestine, Yemen, and Saudi Arabia, which are the countries my ancestors come from. 
I agree with Jesse Marsh. And Jesse Marsh is going to make a brilliant point about how different athletes respond differently to different training stimuli based on their ethnicity and what part of the world their ancestors developed in. Perspective, their racial perspective. But there are tr trends in how different ethnicities develop, how fast. And I used to talk about when I was with the assistant with the national team, that there were the makeup often of what the teams were at the 14, 15, 16, 18, 20, and first team level, that what was going to be important was to, to track physical development, football development through these uh, different age groups, do everything from, from bone density testing to, to weight height um, development to background to, you know, even in the, like you talk about the zip codes, West Coast, East Coast, Midwest, South, like going through the entire makeup of what the, the national teams look like at different levels so that we're making sure that we're dedicating everything we need to to find out which players have the best opportunity to achieve and a arrive at the first national team, um, you know, for each World Cup. And for example, I think in 2010 when I was uh, with that team, there were only like three players in that group that had been on the U14 or part of the U14, U15 ID camps or, or uh, development camps. And so, you know, what does that say? You know, just trying, uh, you know, again, I don't want to, you don't want to deprive um, anyone of an opportunity, but you also want to dedicate energies um, in the right areas so that we can find a way to, to, help the kids that have the best chance to evolve and develop and give them the best chance to succeed. And this is, and that is why I do not work with coaches from West Africa. Because they just don't understand Iraqi genetics. They don't understand French genetics, Welsh genetics, Palestinian genetics, Syrian genetics. They just don't understand. Especially this goofball right here, Sterling Ants. Man, I spent a year at Cushing and... This is why you never have a distance coach as the head coach of your track and field program. This is why you never have the 800 specialist as your head coach for your track and field program. He does not understand the development of athletes from Europe, West Asia, or North Africa. And that is why I suffered at Cushing. Same thing at South High. Walt Harmon was the coach, and aside from playing favorites with the Anglo-Saxons, the Germanics, and the Celtic athletes, so the English, the Germans, and the Irish, and the fact he's racist towards Iraqis, and to a lesser extent racist towards Syrians and Palestinians as well, even though he's a West African descendant, right? I suffered there largely, and the only reason I was anywhere remotely successful was because of strength coach Steve Jones was from Wales. And because of my club coach, Rafa Chavarria, who was born in Mexico, but is of Spanish descent. Again, West Africans do not understand the West Eurasians. They don't understand the Welsh, the French, the Iraqis, the Palestinians, or the Syrians. They just don't. And that is why I will never, ever train under a West African coach again. Because they don't understand my genetics. They just don't. I will train under a Chinese coach. I will train under a German coach. I will train under a Russian coach. I will train under an Iraqi coach, an Egyptian coach, an Algerian coach, a Palestinian coach, a Syrian coach, even a Yemeni coach or a Saudi coach. But I will not train under a coach from Nigeria, Cameroon, um, Ghana, maybe even Togo, Benin, Burkina Faso, because they do not understand the genetics of West Asians, North Africans, and Europeans, right? They just don't. Again, and it doesn't even matter if I have some if I have some Sub-Saharan admixture, you know, specifically If I have some sub-Saharan admixture, you know, via Afro-Yemeni, the Afro-Yemeni community and the Afro-Iraqi community, and even to a lesser extent, the Afro-Palestinian community, it doesn't matter if I have some sub-Saharan ad admixture in my ancestry, when my ancestors are mostly West Eurasians, Tuscan, 
right here I'm closely related to the Tuscans, the Druze, um, the French Basque, North Italians, North African Jews, Moroccan Jews, Saudis, Tunisians, right? But obviously, obviously, I am, you know, 27% Welsh, 21% French, 15% Palestinian and Syrian, 10% Iraqi and Yemeni, 20%, or no, 10% Iraqi, or Yemeni and Saudi, 20% uh, Iraqi and 2% Georgian. It doesn't matter. The West African coaches, they do not understand the genetics of the Western Asian. No, they don't. They do not understand that in track and field, gen from a genetic standpoint, my, the, best, the event with the most potential for me is the 200 meters. They do not understand, in terms of sprints, but in, then in terms of throwing the best event with the most genetic potential for me, is the javelin. They do not understand that. The, the strength sport, the pure strength sport, that is the most genetic potential, that has the most genetic potential for me, is weightlifting. Why? Well, I'm basically half European and half Asian. That is what I am. My top five populations I am descended from are the Welsh, the French, the Iraqis, the Palestinians, and the Syrians. And then after that, the Yemenis and the Saudis. They don't understand that. They don't understand that I am from populations which are hyper-responsive to strength training, and I ha even have to explain that to them, right? I say lifting weights makes Europeans and Asians faster and stronger. Quit being stupid. Europeans and Asians are hyper-strength hyper-responsive to, to absolute strength and dynamic strength. We are stronger in some cases, such as Iraqis, Palestinians, and Syrians, faster than West Africans. And I say I, I'm half Arab and I'm hella fast. My dad is half Arab and is hella fast. We're also stronger than West Africans. And I said, especially the Egyptians, Algerians, Iraqis, Palestinians, and Syrians are stronger than the West Africans. And I say West Africans suck at weightlifting and wrestling. We dominate west africans in weightlifting wrestling powerlifting and sometimes soccer and i said training for absolute and dynamic strength is better than body weight bullshit west africans do not know how to train north africans they do not know how to train west asians they do not know how to train europeans they just suck they don't understand science they don't understand genetics west asians and north africans do understand we do understand genetics that's why we win in weightlifting that's why we win in wrestling, powerlifting, sometimes in soccer, and sometimes in track and field, depending on the event. Again, not a good idea to underestimate Mediterraneans, Mesopotamians, and Balkans. Or even Welsh or French. Not a good idea to underestimate Europeans, underestimate West Asians, underestimate North Africans. Not a good idea, brother. And so this guy, he, this is what I call West African arrogance, because again, a certain demographic of the West Africans and West African diaspora, they have an air of arrogance, especially the Protestant ones, right? Especially the Protestant ones who live in the southern U.S. Right? So he's hella arrogant. When you can't play D-line in NFL, you go to competition. Or maybe because our countries just prioritize weightlifting, wrestling, and powerlifting, and soccer way more. Just saying. And again, he doesn't think Polynesians are stronger than West Africans, bro. Ooh, I grew up in Alaska, bro. Walla, Polynesians are stronger than West Africans. And look what I said. I said I grew up around Polynesians. They would routinely smash West Africans on the football field. I did grow up. I grew up around Brandon Peely. I grew up around Tyrell Ferretti. I grew up around Justice Angafa, Jeremy Angafa, Jordan Tufanga. Don't tell me they didn't smash... West African dudes on the on the football field. That is what they were good at, brother. That is what they were good at. So don't underestimate other populations in the world because guess what? While you have good speed and hypertrophy, you are not the strongest. West Africans are not the strongest. So there you go. That's all for now. Peace.